Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Staff Sergeant Raymond Hoy and this is your Academy. I, I actually screwed up on the text itself. So and this is the first episode of Your Academy Insider. Insider is our new and improved social media YouTube networking thing and it's basically a news profile show where we highlight the news and general goings on here at the Academy. All right, so first up today we have NCLS. No, I'm not talking about baseball. We're actually talking about the National Character and Leadership Symposium. Uh, getting... Now this is an annual symposium that's getting ready for its 18th year. Okay. The two and a half day event brings in speakers from all around the country and offers cadets a chance to see some true leaders of character. A lot of times we refer to it as uh, living examples of character. Folks that have made a mistake, corrected and persevered. Those that have uh, had a dream and stuck to it and made it. And uh, even those that took a tragedy like Rachel's Challenge, that took an awful tragedy um, and turned it into a world of good. Hey, nobody knows anyone like that in the military, huh? As a four degree, I was purely just an onlooker. I was a participant in the sense that I went to the actual event, I listened to the speakers, and that was amazing. It was life changing. The symposium also encourages cadet involvement in the preparation of the event, including those who had a positive experience at previous symposiums. We have a cadet staff that aligns with the permanent party staff that actually runs this program. And that is amazing to watch, just the empowerment of the cadets taking a lead in it. The idea is that the permanent party members are the mentors, the guiders, and that the cadets are the, in, um, as we call the United States Air Force Academy, a leadership laboratory. So they have the opportunity to lead and make mistakes or, or thrive, whichever one. Sink or swim, that's how we roll. Now this isn't your typical symposium where you just sit down and watch. The attendees actually get to decide who they want to see and who have the messages that they want to hear. Who? Who has? I typed it really fast, man. Give me a break. The attendees actually get to decide who they want to see and uh, who has the messages that they actually want to hear. It allows an opportunity for um, them to do a little bit of research, look at who is coming and what stories, and what stories are compelling to them. The symposium will be held in February and has included as many as 35 speakers to choose from in the past. Cadets need to be sure to register in advance so that they can see who they want to see. Okay, up next we're going to discuss SPARK. Now, I'm a little bit of what you would call space stupid. It's okay, I accept that. Uh, stupid is as stupid does, and I does stupid when it comes to space. I spent three years of my career in space command and tried to retain as little knowledge as possible. It just wasn't my thing. Now the space physics and I'm gonna screw that one up probably a couple times. Now the space physics and atmospheric research center. Now that's a mouthful. That's why they call it Spark has developed a new experiment that will eventually head into space. The experiment is a little bit bigger than a softball and it will be delivered to the International Space Station in spring of next year. What is this, the Pony Express or something? Imagine the postage on that package. Can we get a military discount or what? I honestly didn't even know that I would have this opportunity. I came into the capstone, or came into the department in Spark expecting to uh, develop future payloads for future satellites. And they said, oh, by the way, we've got uh, this STP Canary, which was developed a couple years ago. It's going to be going up in March, so we're going to teach you guys how to do it, and we're going to have the cadets uh, learn how to work it and take data off of it. Cadet First Class Thomas Wood has been working with NASA via phone lines in which they work through the entire process of what's actually going to happen during the mission in space. But he's got that unlimited self plan, so you know, he'll, he'll be okay. Now this involves multiple majors uh, broken into teams to be a part of the overall success of the experiment. So we have the Astro team designing actual uh, figures, data, what's gonna actually going to happen, what we're actually looking for, what requirements. We have the physics team that's actually developing the payloads, our experiments. I'm going from programming a microcontroller in a lab off of a computer to pulling data off of something that's going to be in outer space. It's just showing me just the reach that uh, these skills have, and it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah he really looks excited. This is the capstone project for the seniors involved and brings together all the hard work they've put in over the last four years. This also builds on the work of the previous classes that were involved in the research and development of this particular experiment. Oh wait, and we've also got some more stuff for our space geeks out there. Falcon Sat 5 has been out there in the news, but now we've got videos, so it's just that much more awesome. Oh, and we get to hear from cadets who actually worked on it. So hands on, get us some actually real experience with engineering before we're set off to the Air Force second lieutenants. That's right, Falcon Sat 5, as the name may imply, is a cadet built rocket that took about three years to develop, build, and put into space. It's really cool to see like everybody's efforts kind of finally coming together just because there were so many things going on and people kind of converge. Um, and it's really, really neat to finally see it go into orbit. It's Eight, seven, 
six. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. We have liftoff of the S-26, Minotaur 4 space mission. launch mission, carrying seven satellites and 16 experiments to orbit. Woohoo! From the Alaska Aerospace Corporation, Kodiak. This was another capstone project that involved multiple classes and took years to finish. And the coolest part is that it gives cadets the real deal, holy field, hands-on approach to see how they do things in the really real world. Those 47 cadets have enough work to keep over 100 people occupied. So one of their most important educational goals is to learn as an engineer and as management, you have to be able to prioritize every single thing you do. All right, guys, now here's your sound off. Today we ask cadets what they do to get through the dark ages. For those of you who don't know, like me, the dark ages is what cadets refer to as the time of year when it gets light later and dark earlier, just roundabout depression. Check out these happy, touchy-feely answers to combat those down days of winter. Try to find like an activity like skiing or maybe off-roading or uh, you know some kind of off-road run or something like that that you can go do kind of in the snow, maybe build a snowman. A snowman, huh? Must be an engineering major. You just gotta get outside. Like I like going down to the gym, you know, going for a run, something like that. You know, staying active, that's what helps me. Just keeping a positive attitude throughout the entire time really helped out. Smiling, saying hi to everyone in the hallway, taking a break just to see how other people are doing. That really helped me. The most important thing that a cadet can do is get plenty of sleep. Um, even if you have a lot of stuff going on, going to bed, you know, I go to bed at TAPS every night. Going to bed at TAPS and getting plenty of sleep is what keeps me going. Just, like, keep your sanity. Don't let finals and everything bog you down. And don't spend all your free time studying for finals and uh, being cynical that you just came back from Thanksgiving break and stuff. Just like, keep your head up and uh, make sure you get enough sleep and everything. But find time to still go out on the weekends and enjoy yourself, watch some movies, you know, play some Xbox, whatever you need to do. Just don't, don't let school dominate your life or you're going you're gonna to go crazy. So basically you need to get a lot of sleep and you need to totally hang out with your friends. Me, I've got an awesome cubicle at Harmon Hall with a great view of the entire campus. So I just look out the window at the terrazzo at all the cadets walking in the cold. That always puts a smile on my face. Let us know how you get through the dark ages. Man, these cadets have a name for everything. All right, that's all we've got time for today. Even YouTube has a time limit. And I know you can only stand me in short bursts. It's okay, I understand. Till next week, I've been, and always will be, Staff Sergeant Hoy. I've had this stupid stripe forever. Turn that off. That's... Oh, Sal, 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 S